Is there a food that's more satisfying, more well-balanced, more patriotic, more customizable, more just fun to eat than a cheeseburger? I don't think so. I heard somebody say recently that making smash burgers might be difficult for some. We're gonna fix that today. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dishes and Fishes where I show you how to cook and set hooks. Cheeseburgers might seriously be the perfect food. They've got savory, delicious beef. They've got cheese. They've got something acidic. They've got crunchy vegetables. They've got a sauce that you can do whatever you want with. And to top it all off, you get to eat it with your hands like a savage. One of my absolute favorite burgers to make is the Smash Burger. It's easy to make, it's absolutely delicious, and I wanna show you today how I make my version of Smash Burgers. So let's get started. To get started, we're gonna make pickles, and to do that, we're gonna put four pickling cucumbers into a mason jar. Along with those cucumbers, we're gonna put four to five cloves of fresh garlic and eight to 10 peppercorns. Finally, we'll add three to four sprigs of fresh dill to the party. In a small sauce pot, combine one and a half cups of water with one and a half cups of vinegar, along with two tablespoons of salt. Get that on the stove till it comes to a boil and then pour it over the contents of your jar. Those are garlic dill pickles. Set those on your counter till they reach room temperature and then put them in your fridge till you're ready to eat them. Aside from pickles, there are some vegetables that we need to prep for this burger. And we're going with the classics here. We're going with lettuce, tomato, and onion. When I make burgers, it's one of the few times that I actually prefer bib lettuce to like romaine or leaf lettuce. The bib lettuce leaves are awesome because they're kind of the size of our burger buns. It peels off in these nice little leaves. You don't even need a knife to break it down. So I'll pull all the leaves off my bib lettuce head and stack them back into a container and set that aside. Now for the tomato. If you have them available to you, you want to use heirloom tomatoes, but you want a big tomato. Ideally, the tomato needs to be the same size as your burger bun because we're only going to use one slice. If you use two slices of tomato, they can like slide around and one just sits so perfectly. So we're going to start by just coring our tomato and then we're going to slice it into slices that are about a quarter to a half an inch thick. You want to get the texture and taste of these tomatoes when you bite into the burger, which is why you want to slice them a little bit thicker. For our onion, we're going to be using a white onion and just start by cutting the ends off and peeling the white onion. You're going to want to slice this onion paper thin. Yes, if you have a sharp knife, you can do this with the knife, but if you have a mandolin, this is an absolute game changer for both consistency and results. Run that white onion through the mandolin and get yourself a pile of nice paper thin onion slices. Set those aside with your tomatoes and your lettuce. Moving on to our burger sauce, we're gonna start with bacon, and I like to use partially frozen, in this case, this is entirely frozen, whoops, bacon for this sauce. We're only gonna use half a pound of the bacon, and I'm just gonna cut across the bacon and create this large dice. Cutting and cooking the bacon this way ensures that every bite of the burger can be covered by a little bit of bacon, and the bacon doesn't slide off of the burger whenever you bite into it. It also ensures that every last bit of bacon is cooked perfectly evenly. Trust me. So I'm just gonna brown all that bacon off and then I'm going to reserve the fat for our sauce. Set that bacon fat aside so it can cool down to less than 100 degrees. Once you're ready to make the sauce, into a high-sided container, we will put two egg yolks, two tablespoons of Dijon or yellow mustard, and the juice from one half of a lemon. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a buzz as I stream in my bacon fat. This is going to emulsify the mixture and essentially you're gonna be making bacon fat mayonnaise, which is dope. Once I've got that mixture incorporated, I'm going to add in one half of a caramelized yellow onion and blend that in. Lastly, we're gonna add two tablespoons of this vegetable ketchup, not sponsored. This stuff is delicious. It's made with butternut squash, allspice, carrots. It's the best ketchup I've ever eaten, I think. Now it's time to add our pickles. The ones that I did for the video weren't ready when I shot this scene, so I took some from my test batch that I made last week. They are still just as good. And you really only need one half to one pickle for this recipe, so I'm just gonna small dice one pickle. Take your time here. Make sure you dice them really small because you don't want really large chunks on the burger. You want them to kind of blend in with the sauce. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna dump my burger sauce into a large enough container and then gradually add your pickles and taste it until you're happy with the consistency and the crunch and the acidity. And then I like to finish it with a crack of black pepper. And that's it. This sauce is very bacon forward, which again, rules. It's got a nice kick from those garlic dill pickles, a nice savory hit from that vegetable ketchup. It's delicious. Now let's talk about arguably the most important part of this sandwich, the beef. 
I never really got on the Wagyu beef train, but I'll tell you, this Wagyu beef from Costco is the best Smashburger beef that you can buy. Not sponsored. The reason that this beef is so good is because it is so fatty that you cannot dry out the Smashburgers. If you're worried about the price, it's $5.99 a pound, which is perfectly reasonable for food nowadays. I wouldn't go any leaner than 80-20 ground beef from the grocery store. So we're gonna use two pounds of ground Wagyu beef for this recipe, and I found that a burger size of three and a half ounces is just about perfect for Smash burgers three ounces would be okay too you want to err on the smaller side and if you don't have a scale they are the size of a lacrosse ball approximately a little smaller than a tennis ball once i have my patties weighed out i'm going to go through and season those generously on one side with salt and cracked pepper this is the side that's going to get cooked mostly so you can be generous with your seasoning the next vital piece of our burger puzzle is the cheese and for this burger we're going to be using the elegant the delicious the old reliable white american cheese and you'll see the thickness of this cheese this white american cheese that rhymes with brand of flakes white american cheese is my favorite burger cheese if you're going to make this recipe just do me a favor and use it and lastly our receptacle for the contents of the burger is our bun and there are two buns that i believe are acceptable for this recipe number one is the brioche bun which is what we're using and number two is the sesame seed bun Either way, you don't want a bun that's going to take away from the contents of the burger itself. That's why I like brioche, because it's kind of small, still delicious, and can hold up to the extensive contents of a well-crafted smash burger. You're going to need to toast your bun either way, and to do that, you're going to slather both sides with a nice layer of good old-fashioned mayonnaise. You'll see once I put this on the griddle, but this is going to get you a nice, beautiful crust on your buns. And after you have your buns mayoed up, we are ready to hit the griddle. We've got everything. We've got our cheese, our bacon, our buns. Our burgers weighed out, our burger sauce, and our veggies. There's really not a whole lot of prep to this. And now let's make this thing. So I'm actually going to be using my griddle. You can also do this in a cast iron pan, but it's slower and kind of inhibits your smashing ability, I found. But either way, you're going to need a flat, very hot surface. While your surface is warming up is a good time to toast your buns. You want to do this nice and gradually until they get a nice golden brown crust. This bottom bun here is exactly what you want. It's almost like a grilled cheese piece of bread, but it's inside the burger bun. It's epic. Once you've got your buns toasted off, we're going to crank that griddle the whole way up. You want it to be as hot as it can possibly be, and it's time to smash. So we'll put down our burger, keeping the parchment paper on there. And using my burger spatula and the handle from another spatula, I'm going to press down the burger patty so that every piece of it makes contact with my extremely hot griddle. This is also the burger spatula from my grilling guide video. It's an extremely sturdy and awesome spatula for smash burgers. Once you get the parchment paper off of that thing, I like to take my spatula and go back through and kind of smush down the sides. If you can get these sides to be razor thin, it comes out to be extra, extra crispy along the edges. And while this burger is mostly raw, I'm going to put down a nice layer of white onions that we shaved on the mandolin on top. You can season this again if you want to. I just didn't for the shot. So we're making double cheeseburgers today, so I'm going to go ahead and slap down a second one right next to it. And then, honestly, don't touch them. Just let them cook. You want these burgers to cook pretty much the whole way through before you even flip them. You'll see the fluids start to come out. And once they are almost cooked, you should have to scrape them off the griddle. Scraping the burgers off the griddle is a sign of epic crust, which you can see in this shot. And once you flip them over, those onions will cook the rest of the way. On top of that crust, we're going to put our evenly cooked bacon bits, followed by our white American cheese. And we're going to spritz that with a little bit of water. No need for a lid. Just the water next to the burgers will be enough to melt the cheese. And that's pretty much it. By the time that cheese melts, those burgers are going to be ready. The fat in the beef is going to keep them nice and juicy. Stack them up. And oh my goodness, look at that. Look at that drip. Look at that drip, man. And it's time to build the burger. So to our bottom bun, we're gonna put down a nice layer of our burger sauce, and we're gonna make sure that that's edge to edge, and we're gonna be generous. Followed by two to three leaves of our crunchy butterhead lettuce, that's the size of our bun. Our tomato slice, that's the size of our bun. And to that tomato slice, I'm going to season it with salt and freshly cracked black pepper. Don't skip that. We'll then add the star of the show, those smash burgers that we just pulled off the griddle. The top bun also is gonna get some of that sauce. And that's it guys, the perfect burger. And by wrapping it in foil like I'm doing in this shot, the residual heat from the burger patties will kind of steam the bun and steam everything and make it nice and warm and awesome. It will also help compress the burger down a little bit. It's kind of just satisfying to eat a burger out of foil. So this is one option to serve it. And you can see that bundle of deliciousness. Woo! And if you don't have foil, just make the burger and just give it your all. Get in there, do the hunch over the table, whatever you gotta do to eat this thing. 
It's my favorite way to make a burger. And that's it guys, a really, really good recipe. It's good any time of year. This is the perfect burger for me, and I hope you guys make it soon. Thanks for watching.